you follow me, is Jesus' command to Peter in this last study in our series in the book of John. We'll look at Jesus' words to Peter and how it's important it is for Peter to understand his personal need to personally follow Jesus. If you stay with us to the end, we'll look at five different ways that we can discern the will of God for our lives. As we conclude this series in John with this final sermon on the final Sunday of 2023, my, my heart's desire has really been through this just to lay a good foundation of biblical truth. Uh, I can get up here and talk about anything, but I feel a, a, a great burden in my heart to encourage you to know the Lord. The book of John is a great place to know Christ, to see Christ for who he is, to understand who he did, who he was, who he is, what his mission was, what he was about, the things that he went about doing while he was here. And I don't think that any of the time that we've spent in the book of John has been wasted. I feel the deeper that we can go into a lot of that, the better off we are because it gives us a clearer understanding. I don't want to just blow smoke and, you know, say magic words and, you know, somehow that'll make life get better because I I know that I don't have those words. But in the words of Christ, we have hope. Because of Christ, we have hope. Because of what Jesus did, we have hope. Because of who Jesus was, we have hope. I pray that as we've gone through this verse by verse, page by page, passage by passage, that that's been a blessing to you in your walk with Christ. Um, at the end of the day, at the end of our life, we'll stand before the Lord. And what I want for you is to be able to have lived your life in such a way that you'll hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Um, it's only by being in the word of God and by knowing who God is, by listening to his voice and walking in his footsteps that we'll do that, that we'll be able to hear that. Uh, There's a lot of messages that are in this world, and they're, they're all competing for our time. And all of the world's messages, do what you want to do, do what makes you happy, find something that gives you joy and peace. And, you know, surely that would probably fill up a a large auditorium with people who want to hear that message. Just do whatever makes you happy, right? But that's not the message of Jesus. The message of Jesus, as we'll see today, is you follow me. Of all the things that we can be doing in this world, what we need to be doing is following Jesus ourselves. We individually need to follow Christ. My hope is as we've laid that foundation of biblical truth that we can build upon it. Christ is the foundation. He's the one from whom all things spring. We want to be able to listen to, to interpret correctly and obey the word of God. I hope that as you've listened to, as I've preached through this, that you see that that's my heart's desire. It's not my words that matter. It's the words of Christ that matter. We we lift the word of Christ on high. And so that's what I want to do this morning. Starting in the book of John, chapter 21. We'll overlap a little bit of where we were at last week. In verse 18, Jesus says this to Peter. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were younger, you used to gird yourself and walk wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands. Someone else will gird you and bring you where you do not wish to go. Now he said this, signifying by what kind of death he would glorify God. And when Jesus had spoken this, he said to him, follow me. Peter, turning around saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following them. The one on whom also had leaned back on his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is the one who will betray you? And Peter, therefore, seeing him, said to Jesus, And Lord, and what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. This saying, therefore, went out among the brethren that that disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but only if I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who bears witness of these things and wrote these things 
And we know that his witness is true. There are also many other things which Jesus did, which if they were written in detail, I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books which were written. Let me pray. Before we come this morning and looking into your word, Father, we recognize that your word alone is truth. And Lord, we want to cling to it. We want to listen to it. Father, we want your word to be first and foremost in our heart and in our life. We want our actions to be filled and, and uh, inspired and directed by your word. We want our thoughts to be covered with your word. We want our lives to be filled and covered and directed and led by your word. God, we want that indelible imprint of you on us because we've been around you. Because you've shown yourself to us. We want to be people who know you. And Lord, I pray that as we know you, that as you've said in the book of John elsewhere, we can know you, then, then we'll be your disciples and we'll, we'll, be, we'll know the truth and the truth will set us free so that we can follow you completely. Help us, Lord, even now in Jesus' name. Amen. What was Peter's focus? Coming into this passage, Peter was wrestling with what am I supposed to do next? Where was Peter? He was out on the lake fishing. He had denied the Lord, saw Jesus be beaten. He saw Jesus be crucified. He ran away. He was struggling with what to do next. What do I do for a living? What's my job supposed to be? What's my direction? What are the tasks that I'm supposed to be about? Is it fishing or is it something else? What I thought was going to happen here had not happened. And, and now I don't even know what's going to go on with Jesus. And what am I supposed to do next? And we all come to seasons in our life where things change. There's one constant in life. And that's change. Things change. Just when you get comfortable with the way that they are, it changes. Something else is added to. Something else is taken away. And Situations change. You lose a job. You gain a job. The Lord directs you to move. Something happens all around us. Even here at the final day of the year, things are changing. We're changing from one year to another. And you'll struggle with writing 2024 instead of 2023 for a little while. Maybe, maybe you'll get that real quick. But we struggle. Peter was struggling. What do I do now? And Jesus had restored Peter and gave him a new task. His new task was to feed the sheep, to look after his flock, to lead, to do what he needed to, not in the place of Jesus, but the task that Jesus had for him in Jesus' absence. No one can lead like Jesus. In fact, I'd rather have Jesus up here preaching today than me. That way I could learn of Christ and know Christ more. But we all have to do what the Lord is calling us to in his absence. And what the Lord has for you is no less important than what the Lord has for me. It's just your task. It's what God has for you. It is actually the most important thing that you need to be focused in on. Peter was struggling. Well, Jesus describes Peter's future. Peter was worried, would I deny the Lord again? We all struggle with this, right? As we gain victory over sin or the Lord sets us free from things and we go, well, I don't ever want to go back to that. And Peter gives, has given some assurance from Christ. Peter, when you were younger, you did whatever you wanted to, but one day you're going to glorify me in your death. That would give Peter some assurance that he would be able to be faithful to the end. That sounds weird to have that mentioned. Peter, you used to do whatever you want to, but one day you're going to die for me. Peter knew that he would be faithful to the end. And for those of us who have walked with the Lord and we've lived our life with Christ, and then we've come across times where we've denied the Lord and the Lord's restored us and the Lord's forgiven us and the Lord's helped us, it is such assurance that the Lord is gracious. And the Lord's not done yet. And the Lord still has a plan. And the Lord still has things he wants us to do. 
God hasn't given up on us because we struggle with sin. Well, there's hope in that. Because as even as we looked in our study this morning about the righteousness of God, there's nobody righteous. The grace of God unto salvation is for everybody. And God's not sitting over the top of us going, well, you didn't measure up now. That means I didn't save you. He's in the process of providing sanctification in our lives even after he justifies us. This is what Peter was going through. Well, Peter, you know me, and now you're going to know me in greater ways, and there's still going to be issues of sin. As we, even we see in the book of Acts, Peter was struggling with things. There's hope. Every single one of us can grow closer to the Lord each and every moment of each and every day. And God's not done yet. When Jesus describes Peter's future, Peter, you used to do what you want to, but one day you're going to be led where you don't want to go and you're going to stretch out your arms. Somebody else will gird you. You're going to glorify me in the final moments of your life. Look around the room. Ain't none of us getting any younger. Okay. I've stated this many times. I want to see you be faithful to the end. Whatever that is, whatever it is, whatever that looks like in your life, I want you to be faithful to the end. That doesn't mean that you won't mess up. That doesn't mean that there won't be mistakes. That doesn't mean that there won't be anything that you need to ask the Lord for forgiveness for, because I can tell you, there will be those moments where the Lord's going to convict you of sin and redirect you and take some things out of your life that he wants to take out at those points. We need that. And just as Peter was told by Jesus that Jesus knew what he had planned for him, we need to understand that Jesus knows what he has planned for us. Maybe you've made some goals for this coming year. You've resolved to do something. Those are great. And I'm not saying you shouldn't make resolutions or make goals or make plans. But understand this. It's not our plans that happen. Sometimes the Lord is gracious and he says, yes, that was part of my plan too. And maybe you get to uh, enjoy the things that you have planned. But what it does come to the point of understanding is God's plans will happen. Are we going to listen to him? Peter's life And his death would bring God glory. Every day of Peter's life from that point forward would be a struggle between Peter's flesh and Peter's spirit being filled with the Holy Spirit and following Jesus and listening to Jesus and being faithful to the end. But Peter would be emboldened by the Spirit of God and dwelling in him. And he would follow the Lord and do greater things. He denied before, but that's past. He could put that in the past and he could move beyond that. So whatever issue of sin it might be that you've struggled with, you can say, Lord, here's my sin and ask him for forgiveness and he'll forgive you. And he'll cleanse you from all unrighteousness and he'll purify you and he'll make you righteous and he'll continue to work in your life. And the Lord will continue to do those things. Peter's focus was, what am I supposed to do now? Where are you going to go, Jesus? I mean, you're here and then you're gone and then we're in a room and you show up and then you disappear and I don't know what to do next. Well, what we will do next year is the same thing that we should, be, should have been doing this year. Listening to and following the voice of the Lord. You need to listen to the voice of the Lord. You need to follow Jesus. Peter's response was typical of Peter. Peter turned around and said, well, what about this guy? What about this guy? Jesus already had the answer. You need to follow me. You need to listen to me. So I want to give you several how-tos in how to discern the will of God for your life. I've wrestled with this over the years on how do I find what God wants me to do? 
I look back and I see how the Lord has led me. And in each of those situations, all of these things have come true, though to varying degrees, how God has used them. I think the first thing that we need to do when we try to understand and discern the will of God is that we need to surrender ourselves to the Lord. We need to give up our personal desires in this. Not that we abandon that, because God has given certain desires to us. I've always wanted to serve the Lord ever since he saved me. I just didn't understand how that would work out. I just knew that whatever I'd be doing in life, service to the Lord would be part of that. I didn't grow up in the South. I didn't grow up around church. I didn't grow up around all of that. And when um, I came across some stuff from a college that was trying to get me to come to it. And and they're like, you know, if you're a vocational pastor, you've been called to be a pastor. Then there's a scholarship to this. And I thought to myself, well, how does one even know? At, At 18, how do you even know? At 20, how do you even know? And I understand, you know, there's a lot of people who are like, the Lord called me to preach when I was six or whatever it might be. How do you know? There's so many things that go on in your life between that point in time and when you get to be old enough to be even qualified biblically to to do that. How do you even know? And I've come to realize that it's a step-by-step, day-to-day process of listening to and following the voice of the Lord. So we take our desires and we lay them at the feet of Jesus and say, Lord, this is what desires you've put in me. I want to do this. I like this. This is my characteristics. This is my personality. This is who I am. This is who you've made me to be. I'm going to give them to you. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. You've probably memorized this one as I have, but I'll read it from this trust in the Lord with all your heart do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight we trust in the Lord first of all I've made decisions apart from the Lord in my life all of those have turned out to be very unwise decisions and when I ignore the voice of the Lord And just do what I want to do. I end up making mistakes that take a long time to fix. And I'll have to go back and retrace my path. And come back to the point and say. Okay Lord what do you want me to do? I tried to do what I wanted to do. And that didn't work. What do you want me to do? I believe God's sovereign. I believe God knows. I believe God wants us to come come to him. With all of our concerns. And, And this was where for Peter. He wanted to know what to do next. And Jesus is saying, just follow me. And he's basically telling Peter, all of your desires that you have in life, I gave them to you, but I want your first and foremost desire is to lay all that at my feet and follow me. Just follow me. So first of all, we surrender our personal desires to the Lord. Make sure that you want his will first and foremost. The Lord is working in what you want to do but he's trying to get you to follow him. So we all have desires, some of them good, some of them not so good. We need to make sure that the things that we desire line up with what God desires for us. And that takes a little bit of time. Time and patience is a huge part of this. Surrender your desires yourself to the Lord. Secondly, we want to meditate on God's word. Just as we said, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll make your path straight. There's not enough wisdom in me to direct anybody. I have a hard enough time trying to direct myself. But if we trust the Lord and meditate on his word... The Lord will direct us. Psalm 119, 105 tells us what to do. Of course, many verses in the scripture tell us what to do, but let me flip over here. Psalm 119, 105 says, Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We want 
to meditate on God's word. We want the word of God to fill our heart and mind. We want everything around us to be covered by his word so that we can be informed by God's word. There's a lot of things out there, a lot of messages that are that are vying for your attention. And you will follow the messages that you associate yourself with. And so if all of you do is spend your time on social media or on television or on TV shows or whatever it is, and you're listening to songs that don't glorify the Lord and they're not focused in on Christ, what you're going to end up with is a life that's informed by those things. You're going to do what you want to do. You're going to do it the way you want to do it. You're going to end up making decisions to go against the Lord. You're going to glorify yourself. You're going to, you're going to try to do whatever you can to fill, fulfill yourself. It'll all be self-focused. What do I want? What do I gain? What do I get from this? And it'll all be about me. But if we associate ourselves and surround ourselves with the word of God, then that will direct us. We'll, we'll think about the things that honor the Lord. We'll remember verses in the scripture like this. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. And we'll be thinking about God's word because God's word is all around us. We want God's word around us. I'm not saying that you can't watch television or listen to other music. All of those things have its place. You're going to be bombarded with that. It's everywhere you go. You walk into a store, you're going to hear music. Out there in real life, someone else is playing music in their vehicle. You might hear it. Go to Walmart. They got, they got it in the parking lot. Okay? But what do you fill your life with? What are you meditating on? What are you thinking about? As a man thinks, so he is. And what you think about will direct your steps. If you're thinking about the, will of, or the word of God and you're letting the word of God fill you, then from the word of God, your decisions will be informed. But if you fill yourself with all sorts of worldly things, then from those worldly things, your decisions will be informed. What are you meditating on? Well, when you surrender yourself to the Lord and you start meditating on his word, you can't help but listen to his voice. If you don't have his voice around you, you won't be able to listen to it. It's simple. If you're not listening to the voice of the Lord, you won't follow it. So somewhere in there, you need to be listening to the voice of the Lord. You need to be meditating on the voice of the Lord. This is what Peter needed to understand. He'd had Jesus with him for several years. He'd listened to the word of Jesus as Jesus taught. And now he would have to remember what Jesus said and think about what Jesus said. Maybe even write some things about what Jesus said. Journaling is a great thing to do, to, to go through the Word of God and write down some thoughts. I tell you, one of the things that I've enjoyed over the past year that I started doing was going into the Word of God every morning and taking it down passage by passage and writing some stuff about it. I don't know if anybody ever reads any of the devotion stuff that I, I do and put out there, but I, I guarantee you the one that has benefited from it the most is me. Me. I don't know if it's benefited anybody else but it sure has helped me because I'm thinking about the word of God at the beginning of my day. I can't tell you how many years I went through life just getting up in the morning and rushing off to work and the word of God was not first. I prayed, help me today, Lord. (laughs) Help me with this job. (laughs) Help me with what I'm doing. And I think about the word of God, but not like I'm doing right now. And I know there's a time and season for everything, but we need to be in the word of God. So we meditate on God's word. We surrender our personal desires and our, our, our des- uh, who we are to the Lord, and we meditate on God's word. Well, something that goes along with that, hand in glove, is spending focused time in prayer. If you're going to be in God's word, you're going to be praying. You're going to pray God's word. You'll pray it back to the Lord. You'll pray these things to the Lord. James chapter 1, verse 5 is one that all of us can benefit from. The book of James is a great book, practical aspects of of Christian living in it. James chapter 1 and verse 5 says, If any of you lacks wisdom, and that's everybody, it's all of us, it applies to everybody in here, 
If any one of us lacks wisdom, God, what do I do next? Let him ask God. Does that qualify only for the big decisions in your life? Or is it for everything? It's everything. Well, God, what do I do today? I'd seem mundane. But God's in the details. What does the Lord want you to do? The Lord might want you to do something that maybe that's not what you really wanted to do today, but the Lord has his will for you. So every day, Lord, what do you want me to do? Let him ask God who gives to all men generously and without reproach. God's not going to say, I knew you weren't wise. (laughs) See, you know, a bunch of foolish people coming to me for wisdom. Well, you know, Paul even talks about it. There's no one who understands. There's none righteous, no one who seeks God. Not in and of ourselves, but if the Spirit of God is moving in your heart and you come before the Lord and say, God, give me wisdom, you know what he's going to do? He's not going to make fun of you. He's going to give you that wisdom. And this is what Jesus was trying to tell Peter. Peter, I just want you to follow me. Every aspect, every day, every step, just follow me for the next step. You don't need to know the very end, although Jesus told Peter the very end. You're going to be faithful to the very end. He didn't need to know all the little details in between. He just needed to know, this is the direction I want you to go. Just take each step with me. Take each step with me. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask, let him ask of God. He gives to all men generously without approach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. I don't know if any of you have seen any of the video that's come out of California here recently of all these waves and tides and all this that's just causing havoc down there. That is a great picture of a life of a person who is not listening to the Lord. Those waves are large and boisterous and causing all sorts of damage. You want to damage your life? Ignore the Lord. You want to damage your life? Listen to multiple sources of direction. We need to be directed by the Lord. The Lord alone has wisdom. Sure, there's wisdom in the multitude of counselors. We should go talk to people who are wise and godly. And that's something that's the next point. We should talk to people who are godly. But first and foremost, we need to listen to the Lord. We need to pray and ask God for wisdom. We need to spend time in prayer. Let him ask of God. Jesus spent time in prayer. We see later that in the book of Acts that Peter would spend time in prayer. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 says this, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then what happens after that? If we do that, and the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, shall guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. When we spend time in prayer, the Lord places a shield around us the shield of his wisdom and his Holy Spirit. And then Paul says this, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good report, if there's anything excellence or anything worthy of praise, let your minds dwell on such things. What is Paul saying over and over and over again? What is Jesus saying over and over and over again? What is God saying throughout the scripture? Think on me. Let your mind be focused on me. Read it. Think about it. Pray through it. Talk about it. Let God direct your steps. So we surrender our desires to the Lord. We meditate on God's word. We spend focused time in prayer. And yes, we seek the godly advice of godly counsel. There, there might be times that you can't seek the godly advice of others, but if you're surrounded by the Lord and you know you're in his word, you can't help but be led by God. But there is going to come a point in time where you might need to seek the advice of somebody else. Are you going to go find your broke relative and ask him about finances? No. Are, are, are you going to find somebody who's made bad business decisions and lost all the businesses he's ever been involved with to go ask about business? No. Are you going to go talk to a teenage boy about what it, mean, what it, what it means to raise a family and, and, you know, bear up children and bring them up in the uh, nurture and admonition of the Lord? No, he doesn't know anything about that. He's been the recipient of it, but he's never gone through it. What, who are you going to talk to? Are you going to go talk to somebody who's been doing it? 
You're going to find somebody who's been living that. And you look at their life and you go, well, they're following the Lord. And, and there's wisdom in that. You know, things have gone real well for them. They, they seem to be a godly family. And, I mean, they've been married forever. And it doesn't seem like they're having a lot of problems. And, you know, what they'll do is they'll get together with you and say, well, here's how the Lord's been leading us. And although it doesn't look like we've had issues, here we have. Here's how we've resolved them in the Lord. And so we, we need to go and talk to people who can give us godly counsel. We need that insight of others. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 22, tells us that without consultation, plans are frustrated. But with many counselors, they succeed. Now, what kind of counselors do you want? You want godly counselors. Because unwise counsel will destroy you. Go find people who are godly if you want to be godly. If you want to be worldly, there's plenty of people out there that can lead you. You don't need to go very far to find them. And you'll also see the effects of what that leadership produces in their life. So, seek some godly counsel. And the last thing you need to do is consider carefully. You may need to think about it for a while. This goes back to meditating on God's word. The first three are really key, but these last two really kind of go together with it. You need to consider carefully, what is God doing right now in your life? I know you may want to be an astronaut, but guess what? If you're not anywhere near being an astronaut, it may take a few years for you to get there, right? Okay. I know you may want to be a millionaire, but if you're broke and you can't even get a, you know, you don't have a car... And, and there's nobody who wants to help you. You may have to figure out how to get to a job and work for a while. Everybody wants what they can't have yet. What is the Lord doing in your life right now? The Lord's working. What is he doing? How is he directing? Who does he have around you? Are there people that you need to get out of your life? Are there people that you need to include so that you can be better counsel? What is God doing right now? Use your mind that God gave you. And be led by the Spirit. I know a lot of people who just go out there willy-nilly in their life and they just go, well, I'm going to go off and do this because surely God's in it. I had a friend of mine who was telling me one day, he's like, you know, I went out for a drive and, and I'm like, I didn't even know where to go next. And I was started to read through the Bible and I figured I'd, I'd go straight until the Lord told me to go right or left. And he, so he's reading through the Bible. And that's, that's, not how you, that's not how you use the Bible. You don't just open up to a random page and figure out where the first right or left is. Can God use that in your foolishness? Sure, but that's not the best way to do it. What is God doing right now? Where is God moving? What is God directing you? You need to think. You need to plan. You need to consider the word of God. So much in here. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 tells us, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit. What's the Lord doing? Well, the Lord's moving everywhere. I tell people this all the time when I get a chance to talk about church. The Lord is moving people to and from churches all the time. But God's always moving. Now, why would God lead people to a church? That's exciting, right? We want that. We, we, we love that. And I would think that God would lead people to a church because it's healthy and it's got life in it and it's discipling people and, and people are growing in the Lord and there's spiritual wisdom there. But why would God lead people away from a church? Nobody likes to think about that. But it's happening all over the place. And I I know that God leads people away from places because there is no spiritual wisdom there. And the Lord had left the building a long time ago and he is not there. And so because he cares about his church, he leads people away from those places. No, my desire is that they would listen to the Lord and go to a place where they can get plugged in and grow in the Lord. But far too often people just go, well, I'm not going to go anywhere because such and such or so and so made me mad. They made a decision that I didn't want to, I didn't like. Well, what do we need to be led by? We need to be led by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit. How do you do that? 
Surrender your personal desires to the Lord. Meditate on God's word. Spend focused time in prayer. Listen to those who are following the spirit of the Lord. That's how you do that. If you're surrounding yourself with the world, you will look like the world. You'll act like the world. You'll talk like the world. You'll make worldly decisions. And then you'll sit back and wonder why things aren't going the way that you want them to in your life. Well, you're worldly and you're making bad decisions. You want to make better decisions? Get into God's word. Understand what it says. Meditate on it. Pray. Those are, those are bare minimums. So we need to pray. We need to seek the Lord. We've already been in John. We've been through much of John. One verse here, John chapter 14. Jesus is with his disciples before he, before he goes out and is crucified. And he says this in verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I've said. So if you know the Lord and you're listening to his word and you're le- letting God direct you, he promises here that the Holy Spirit will help us. The Holy Spirit is what we need. We need the Spirit moving in our life. We need the Spirit indwelling us. We need the Spirit informing us and showing us what we need to do. So those are some things on how to discern the will of God. Surrender yourself to the Lord. Meditate on God's word. Spend focused time in prayer. Seek godly advice from others. And consider carefully what the Lord is doing. Then make a decision and follow the Lord and just direct it. let the Lord direct your steps. Well, how does this apply to Peter? What was Peter's response? He turns around and says, well, what about this guy? It don't matter what God's doing in their life. What is God doing in your life? I mean, it does matter what God's doing in their life. We want to see what God's moving in their life. But God may be leading them to do something different than what he wants you to do. God might be leading them to go on a mission trip to Zimbabwe. Is that where, is that where the Lord wants you? He might want you on a mission trip to your workplace. He might want you to get a job. So you have a mission to go on. <laughs> he might do all sorts of things. The Lord's directing each individual in his church as he sees fit. All of it matters. Well, Peter turns around, sees John. They had a close friendship. And even in the book of Acts, we see Peter and John hanging out together. They were friends. They, they loved the Lord together, but individually. Their faith in Christ did not hinge on each other. It was synergistic and they grew together in Christ. And Peter followed the Lord and John followed the Lord. And eventually they just went off and did other things. Peter followed the Lord in the, in the, the land of Judea. He was faithful to the end and John went off elsewhere. He goes off to what's modern day Turkey and pastors some churches up there. It leads a lot of people to the Lord. There are times that the Lord has us together and the times the Lord has us apart. What about this man? Do we go together as we have been going? Like we've all been hanging out together, right? Jesus, us and and these 12 guys, we've been hanging out together. Will the group stay together? I think this is really what Peter was asking about. Are, Are all of us disciples supposed to stay together now, Lord? We've been together. We've been together with you. Is this always going to be the way it is? Jesus said, it doesn't matter. You just need to follow me. You might be together for a while. You might be apart for a while. You know, Peter and John are together in the book of Acts, as I've said. They were together at the fire before the crucifixion. Uh, they They definitely ministered together. But we all know the reality of this. All friendships don't always stay the same. I've got friends that I run into every now and then. And it'll be years between the times that I've seen them. We just pick up just like it hadn't. It was yesterday, right? We just kind of continue on. and We continue encouraging one another and following the Lord. And there are other friendships that are closer that I'm with every single day. I'm with Ned every single day. You know, it's a different kind of friendship. And the relationship's a bit stronger. And there's a, there's a bit more depth to it. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But we're following the Lord together. And we're following the Lord individually. She's doing things that God's directing her to do. And I'm doing things that God's directing me to do. If God told me to to work with homeless kids like she is, I would be at a loss. But the Lord's equipped her to do what she's doing right now. And I know it won't be permanent. It's for the season she's in right now. And then she'll move on to the next thing. Just like we all do this. 
All of us do this. If I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? Sometimes we need that adjustment. Don't worry about everybody else. Don't worry about what I want for him. We're not talking about what I want for John, Peter. We're talking about what I want for you individually. For you individually, I want you to be faithful to the end. I want you to feed my sheep. I want you to, to, to lead these, these young ones in the Lord. I want you to help them know me. I want you to honor me. I want you to follow me. God may call someone else to something else, and he often does. Death may or may not come in that process. All of the, the apostles died for the Lord except for the apostle John, and they tried to kill him. They boiled him in oil. He survived that. They put him on the island of Patmos. He survived that. He lived to be an old man, and he died faithfully serving the Lord. Peter, not so much. Peter didn't live as long as John did, but he was faithful to the end. He was hung upside down on a cross, and he was crucified And he died faithfully serving Jesus. There were others who were drawn and quartered. Others that were speared. Others that that died in other ways. But they lived their life honoring the Lord. And guess who receives the glory from that? God does. It's a beautiful symphony of how God leads and how God directs. God does those great things. God has called you to follow him. How is he calling you to follow him? Well, that's what you need to figure out. What is his assignment for you? So that's your homework. (laughs) There won't be a quiz after this, (laughs) but it does affect every decision you make. What is your assignment? What is the assignment? Well, this concludes the study in John. But John adds this addendum. There was a rumor that started because of what Jesus said. And people thought, well, John's going to live forever. And you know, there are people who believe that the Apostle John is still alive on the earth, but that's not true. The Apostle John is more alive now than he's ever been because he's with the Lord. But he lived faithfully each day, failing, I'm sure, at times, but learning how to live faithfully and learning how to get back up. And John says, you know, there's a lot of other things that Jesus did. A lot of other things that that we could write about Jesus. But John's purpose of writing this book, we've already looked at. These things are written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. That was John's purpose. John lived faithfully, and then John wrote so that others could know him. And we've been a beneficiary of that. We've been blessed because what John wrote John was faithful to what God called him to be faithful to. And that's all I could ever ask of anybody. Will you be faithful to what the Lord is telling you to do? And God will direct your steps. Whatever life decision you might be struggling with, do I go here? Do I go there? Do I get married or not? Do I, do I uh, direct my energies in this direction or go somewhere else? The Lord's going to direct you. He's going to, and he's going he's to lead your steps if you listen to him. We're not told everything. We're told the most important things, and the most important thing for us is to follow Jesus. You follow him. Will you follow Jesus? Will you discern his will? Will you let him lead you? Will you listen to Jesus? Will will you follow him alone? If there's anything that I could wish for you in the year to come, is that this coming year, your life will be led by the Lord. And in 12 months, we'll look back and we'll be able to say, isn't it wonderful what the Lord's done? As I've surrendered, as we've surrendered to the Lord, as we've listened to and prayed and, and you know, covered ourselves with God's word and godly counsel, isn't it wonderful what the Lord has done? 
Look at what Lord, the Lord did with us. Look at what the Lord did through us. Look at what the Lord did around us. Then the focus isn't on me. It's not on you. It's on Jesus. And Peter, said, Peter was told, don't worry about what I'm going to do with John. I've got a story for John that has nothing to do with you. You might be part of it. The stories interweave together and they're all beautiful in their own way. But I just want you to follow me. And if all of us will listen to the voice of the Lord and allow him to follow us, allow us to follow him, let the Lord lead us. Let God direct our steps and we're going to follow the Lord. And we can encourage one another to do the same thing. I'm going to get my focus off of everybody else and just focus in on Christ and do what Christ says. Then he's going to do some mighty works in that. that will bring him glory and we'll benefit from that. We'll benefit because we'll know him more And we'll hear that. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. I want to close with just a moment of prayer. If you need someone to pray with you, I'll be here at the front. There might be some decision you need to make. Let me pray with you. If you don't know the Lord this morning, I would encourage you to listen to what Jesus is saying here to Peter. You follow me. Will you follow Jesus? Will you stand with me as we pray? Lord God, we just want to thank you for what's recorded in your word. We're so humbled, Lord God, that you saw fit to have it here for our benefit. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to follow you. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to surround ourselves with you. Surround us, Lord God, with your spirit. Move in and through us and around us, even now, to direct our steps closer to you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.